Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm Ara Shatter, and I'm back with the continuation of teaching Adobe Animate. In this video, we're going to create an interactive animation between a ball and a character. The goal is both to use the techniques I've taught you in the previous lessons and also to learn some new animation techniques. In the earlier lessons, if you remember, we designed this character and added bones to it. Now, any kind of movement we want, we can create for the character. First, I want to set the character's initial position. On frame 1, I adjust the character's pose and create a standing position. I move one of the character's hands closer to his waist. The other hand, I bring forward. I bend his hand a little to give the character a more natural pose. That way, when the ball comes in, the character will throw it toward the ground with his hand. So this is our character's initial pose. Now, on frame 1, I create a new layer. I double-click on this new layer and name it Ball, then click here. Now I import the image of the ball. I hold the left mouse button, drag it, and place it here. Click on the ball, go to Object and Properties. If you activate the lock icon, you can resize the ball right here. I hold the left mouse button and drag to make the ball smaller. This size is almost suitable for the ball. I place the ball where I want it. An important point is that the ball layer must be above the character's layer so that the character's hand appears behind the ball. If I move the ball layer below, you'll see that the hand goes in front of the ball. So the ball layer must be on top. Now, I create another new layer from here and name this layer ground. Then I select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle. Using the free transform tool, I click on the rectangle and change its color. This color is almost suitable. In this way, I created the ground. Now you see that the ground is placed on top of the character. So, I drag the ground layer and put it at the very bottom. I select the ground and move it down a little. Since the ground color is the same as the character's shoes, I change the color of the ground. I lock the ground layer so it won't move anymore. First, I select the ball layer, right-click on it, and convert it into a symbol. In the graphic mode, I click the OK button. Now I need to create frames. So, starting from frame 2, I hold the left mouse button and drag until frame 30. Remember that you must create frames for all three layers. I release the mouse at frame 30 and click on Insert Frame. Now, I right-click on the ball layers bar and choose Create Motion Tween. If you recall, I already explained all of this in previous lessons. Now the ball is ready for animation. I move to frame 15. While holding the shift key, I use the free transform tool and drag the ball downward. This way, the ball moves toward the ground. Now, in the last frame, I want the ball to return to its original position. If I do this manually, the ball might not land in exactly the same place. So, I press Ctrl plus Z and go back to frame 1. Here, I hold down the Alt key along with the left mouse button, drag, and release at frame 30. This way, I created a copy of that frame. So basically, if I play it now, the ball moves down and then comes back to its original place. I activate the loop mode and hit play. You see that the ball has a very simple movement. Now, I place the slider at frame 13. I want the ball, as it goes downward, to stretch a little. So, with the free transform tool, I make the ball narrower. But as you can see, when I do this, frame 15 is also affected, and the ball no longer returns to its normal shape. So I press Ctrl plus Z. I only did this to show you that you must first click on each keyframe, then right click and choose Insert Keyframe All. 
I repeat the same process for frame 15 as well. When we choose all, keyframes are created for all options like position, scale, rotation, and so on. Now I press all so that a keyframe is created for every option, which means when we add another keyframe later, this one won't disappear, and the ball shape won't be lost. I select the last frame, right click, and choose insert keyframe all. Now I return to frame 13 again. Using the free transform tool, I make the ball a little narrower and give it a stretched shape. You see that now at frame 15, the ball is back to its normal shape. So at frame 15, we have the ball in its normal form. Now I go to frame 17. From the same keyframe I just created, I make a copy. Holding down Alt and the left mouse button, I drag it and release it at frame 17. This way, the ball again takes the stretched position we made at frame 13. You can see here it's normal, and here again it's stretched. Because when the ball hits the ground and goes upward, it should have a stretching effect. At frame 15, when the ball hits the ground, it should have a squashed effect. So I select the ball with the free transform tool, hold down Alt, and drag it downward to squash it slightly. When the ball is squashed, it should also widen a bit. So now you see that a bounce effect is created for the ball, and then the ball returns to its original shape. But here too, when the character is supposed to hit the ball, the ball should again get slightly squashed. So, I squash it a bit. Now, to make sure that the exact same position and transformation happens at the last frame, I select this keyframe, then hold Alt and the left mouse button, and release it at the last frame. So, this keyframe is copied to the final frame as well. If I hit play now, you'll see the ball naturally bounces off the ground. Now we also need to animate the character's hand. At frame 1, the character hits the ball. When I reach frame 15, the character's hand should be raised again, because he is supposed to hit the ball again. So, with the selection tool, I select the character's layer and raise his hand. This position looks fine. Again, when the ball comes up, the character's hand should come down. So, on the character layer, I select this keyframe, hold Alt with the left mouse button, and release it here. Now, in the last frame, the character's hand returns to its initial position. Now I hit play. So, the animation is created, but it doesn't look natural yet. That's because when the character hits the ball, his hand should move faster, and also when the ball comes down, its movement should be faster than the natural pace. If you remember, in the previous lessons, I explained ease, which we used to change the speed and acceleration of an object's movement. So first, I select the ball layer. In the Properties panel, under Frame, you can see that in the Tweening section, there's an option called Ease. If I set Ease to minus 100 and press Play, you'll see what happens. Well, this motion doesn't look natural. The ball is very slow at first. So I return to frame 1 again, and this time I set the ease value to 100. Now, if I press play, you'll see that the motion of the ball looks much more natural. When the ball goes up, it slows down, and when it's hit, it moves faster. Now we must do the same for the character's hand. I select the character layer. In the Properties panel, under Frame, the Ease settings are available. Since these settings are related to the character's bones, the Ease settings here are slightly different. I can choose different options for them. For example, I select this option and set its strength to 100, then hit Play. This way, you see that now when the character's hand strikes the ball, it happens faster, and both the character and the ball move more naturally. I just remembered there's one more thing to do. When the character raises his hand here, his body should also move slightly backward. As a result, the character's movement becomes more natural. 
Now I press play. In this way, we managed to create this animation. If I also press Ctrl plus Enter to preview the project, you'll see that we've created a very fun and interesting animation. Well, this lesson comes to an end here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Until the next video, goodbye for now.